In introducing the postulates of quantum mechanics, we uh, introduce some things like operator, eigenvalues, eigenvalue equation, wave functions, observables, and so on. So let's uh, figure out, uh, try to uh, figure out what these mean and get a better understanding. First, let's look at this mysterious wave function, which by a postulate of quantum mechanics contains, quote, information about the system. Well, what does that mean? Well, the people who developed quantum mechanics were a little confused, and in fact, even today, there's um, controversy about exactly what the wave function means. But most scientists take the Born interpretation of the wave function. So this is not set in stone. There's some uh, discussion currently about this, but let's just go with the mainstream here. Let's just, just do herd quantum mechanics. We'll follow the herd. So the Born interpretation of the wave function is as follows. The square of the wave function is equal to the probability density of finding a particle in a particular region of space. Okay, so no longer is um, are these particles well-defined. For example, in the Bohr model of the atom, you had these well-defined particles uh, orbiting around the nucleus, and they had a quantized angular momentum. Now, the particle represented by a wave function is no longer definite, but in fact, it's just the probability density of finding a, a particle in a particular region of space. All right, so we take the wave function, and we square that, and that has units of probability divided by volume. So this is what is known as probability density. All right. And remember, the wave function is a function of the spatial coordinates. So you have a wave function. And let's say we have a particular volume here. We want to know, and we have a particle, and say this is the universe. And this is some particular region of space that we're interested in in the universe. If we want to know what the probability of finding a particle in there, well, this has some volume dv. So it'll be the wave function of the particle squared times that volume dv. And that then will give you the probability of finding the particle within that volume. So psi is or psi squared is the probability density. And psi itself, the wave function itself, could be a complex number, has no really well-defined meaning. But if you square it, it's a probability density. All right, and note that, as we'll talk about in just a minute, if you integrate the probability density over all space, that has to equal 1. Why is that? Well. Uh, let's integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity of the wave function squared and we'll introduce here this symbol complex conjugate because we said that uh, in general the wave function can be a complex number and the way you square the complex number in order to get a real number because this is going to be probability is to take the complex conjugate so star means take complex conjugate. All right, so let's uh, show that. Suppose you have a complex number, which can be written as a plus i b, where i is defined as the square root of minus 1. The complex conjugate of this number would be a minus i b. So the complex conjugate says take a uh, take i and change it to minus i. And then if you take, say, a plus i b and take the complex conjugate of that and multiply by a plus i b, take the complex conjugate means change i to minus i. This is a real number. And that's what we want probability density to be, a real number, not an imaginary number. And then here we multiply this over some volume of space. So what does this d tau mean? d tau means uh, uh, d volume, um, uh, some volume in space. 
And we write it this way, d tau, because sometimes we'll be uh, expressing uh, our wave function in terms of Cartesian coordinates, x, y, z, and sometimes we'll be expressing them in terms of other coordinate systems, say spherical coordinates, r, theta, and phi. So this is just a general way, so we don't have to really specify the coordinate system. Anyway, so here we take the probability density and we integrate over all space. That means multiply by the volume of the entire space. This has to equal 1. Why is that? Well, if this is our entire universe here and the particle does exist, the probability of finding the particle somewhere in space has to equal 1. So if you integrate this over all space, the probability has to be 1. You have to find it somewhere in space, otherwise the particle doesn't exist. All right, so that's what it means by the uh, wave function. The square of the wave function is a probability density of finding a particle in a particular region of space. Multiply by that uh, particular volume and that gives you the probability of finding the particle within that volume.